KSI and Joe Fournier had a face-to-face -face today. Apparently, this was filmed a little bit ago, but it's our first time seeing them since that press conference that was a little awkward where Joe was saying he was going to give him a side deal, side men, and yes, I asked him why his chain was fake. It was very odd, but to be honest, they sold the fight pretty well. We're all here to see it, so... Is there anybody in anybody else's head? Is Joe Fournier going to convince I, us, the viewer, I, that he's a legitimate threat to KSI? Is KSI going to convince us, the I, viewer, that he's about to absolutely steamroll I, Joe Fournier faster than every channel in the UK because the sidemen are dominating? I don't have those answers, but it's time for the breakdown. Let's go. On the 18th of December in 2017, London boxer Joe Fournier beat Wilma Mejia for the WBA International Light Heavyweight Championship, knocking his opponents out in round number eight. So this whole idea of Joe Fournier knocking out Wilma Mejia and it being for a WBA belt, I mean, it happened, but it's false. None of the stuff about it is legitimate. I've, I've gone through this in videos before, but I'll rephrase it again. Joe Fournier was on PED suspension when this happened. It was done in the Dominican Republic and he was fighting while suspended. Where is Wilmer Mejia on Joe Fournier's record on BoxRec? I wonder why he's not on there. You wanna know why? It's because the fight never actually counted. No one sanctioned it. It's not a real belt. It's not a real championship. They ranked him number 11 in the world without ever beating a ranked opponent. And yes, once again, he was suspended. PED usage, 18 month ban. They're trying to make Joe seem legitimate for KSI. And by the way, yes, he's a test for KSI. Build it as experienced boxer, cool, but don't just lie to the people. Because this belt, even if he has it, even if it was shiny, even if he won it physically, it means nothing. Just three months later, KSI, social media sensation, took to the ring for the first time to take on Joe Weller. And he oh. would claim a TKO victory. That was in Olympic Park in London. Since then, two fights with Logan Paul, a draw and a win for the nightmare. Moving on to Misfits Boxing. Two fights, one night, Swarms and professional boxer. <laughs> Why'd they use this highlight of my guy Swarms, man? Next up, tall Southpaw, Faze Temper, who also went down in the Jeez. very first round. This is the biggest test in crossover boxing this year. This is the biggest test in crossover boxing this year. If you don't count the Tommy Fury fight or the Anderson Silva fight, which was, I guess, last year. Yes. And I just, I can't help it, but look at Joe. He looks like he works at a pawn shop. Guy's like, yeah, I'll give you about $20 for that belt. He is a threat. I'm not saying he's not. He just doesn't look like it. But he stood next to KSI. Nice little push. You like that? Yeah, 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 Okay, so yeah, this was done right after the press conference. I had to give it some, some excitement. No, yeah, I see. It. Okay, so right away, we know that the push was... Garbage. Complete, no actual emotion behind it, no nothing, no animosity. Just to give us some excitement. Hell behind the scenes look, guys. If we're pro wrestling here, we're supposed to keep kayfabe. If you push him on stage, Joe, keep the same energy, bruh. You don't like the chain? Nah, I think it's fake. You want the track? Nah, it's... Come on, man. You know, you know that's not our own. You think the room is fake, too? How much? 360 pounds, is that? 360,000 pounds? For a watch? I'll lend it to you if you want. No, I don't. You know. If you want style tips, I got you too. I don't care about your style. <laughs> <laughs> if you want style tips, I got you too. Okay, so I don't give a f Come on to my left, the former WBA international light heavyweight champion, the billion dollar badass. Joe Fournier. The billion dollar badass. My ass, brother. One. Badass, no. Two, he's not a billionaire. I'm just going to hold that for now, but he's not. Okay. The man to my right. The man who stops everything in his path. Social media sensation. KSI. He didn't stop one thing in his path. Now I'm just playing. <laughs> Do you respect Joe as a boxer? No, 100%. Yeah, no, you yeah. know, 9 0 pro. And yeah, he's got all his accolades. Yeah, yeah. Look, I know this can be tough. He's given himself all of those accolades, and everyone has just accepted it as if this is real. One accolade I could give him right now is most sagging ear. I don't know what that, that lobe is doing, but it's about to touch his shoulder blade. I'm ready, like. You know, I'm game. This is this is my opportunity to show more than what you know my competitors could do. Show you know, show more than 
what Jake Paul could do, etc. You know, I want to put my- that is what we got to talk about. KSI is, and and not just KSI, but kind of the entire build behind this fight, and really KSI's boxing return has been: I want to destroy Jake Paul's legacy. I want to beat Jake Paul. I want to outdo Jake Paul at everything he does. The problem with stating that for this fight is that Joe Fournier is not the same level as the guy that Jake Paul fought. So when you say I'm going to do the thing that Jake Paul couldn't do, he obviously means he wants to beat a pro boxer, right? Well, Joe started boxing. Boxing is a pro at 31 years old. And he's only been boxing for those 10 years and really not even in those 10 years. Well, he shouldn't have been boxing for at least 18 months of those 10 years, but he also took a long break, I think five or so years off in that run itself. So nine fights in 10 years is not the same as a 23 year old just turned pro Tommy Fury. I understand again what he's trying to say for the optics of it, but it is in no way the same. I think you're gonna really understand that the power is no joke. And, you know, same, same with, like, temper. When I hit him with the two-piece, he realized it was a long, long day. You know, you're talking about a whole different sport between the world champion at Call of Duty and the WBA like, national champion. <laughs> the world champion at Call of Duty. Okay, Joe, I like that. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's not disrespect temper. Like, he has I'm not, been... I'm just saying. No, no, no. He's been he is in, the world champion at Call of Duty. No, yeah. <laughs> he's been in the game for a while when it comes to uh, combat sports and uh esports no <laughs> esports <laughs> Right. And uh, listen, I love my boy Tommy, but Joe is cooking him right now, bro. You are the best YouTube boxer. I believe so. You know, yeah, I'm yeah, the yeah. one. I, the I, best. I, yeah. I'm course. not discrediting you. What you've done in the last couple of years, yeah. you've definitely bridged the gap, right? So let's say I'm a ten and you started at a zero, mm. you're a seven. You're okay. still not a ten. Yeah. Joe, you're not a 10, buddy. What are you talking about? First off, your looks are about a 3.5. That watch is the only 10 on your wrist. That's it, bro. That's the only 10 you got on you. So when I get so, in that, so when I get in that ring I want you to be. and hit you, and you realize, oh, wait, he's actually a 14. No, what what not, then? No, nah, nothing. That's what are the maths here? What are, what are we doing? He went from a 7 to a 14 while Joe's sitting at 10. Now Joe's going to be a 20. I... Can't keep up. Jack. I need to be an eight out of ten to beat you. So you're not even putting your all into it. No, I've sparred twice. I've been in the clubs. I've been bon money every Well, night. meanwhile, I'm here. You know, it ain't gonna make a difference. My all. In. I'm gonna tell you this: if Joe actually hasn't been training, KSI is gonna fuck him up. I fully believe that. I think KSI wins this fight anyway. Joe is not high enough level to not take to not take KSI seriously. I mean, Tommy even took Jake seriously enough to really train for him, and Jake still had his moments in that fight. So if you're faking sparring knockouts, if you're faking your interactions with all of your money, and you're doing some of the things that Joe does, including all of the stuff that I went through talking with Joe about defaming my character because I'm speeding up training foot... That doesn't tell me that you are taking this seriously. I want to be tested. This, You're going to be tested. Is is... You're going to be tested. But the thing is, the difference is that moment where I test you, the next time you wake up, you're going to be like, what happened? Who won? You're going to be like, what day is it? And nice. It's going to be like, oh, shit. Oh, who owns Misfits? Oh, Joe does. Oh, <laughs> shit. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I like Joe, man. I like this. He's talking his stuff. Okay. Who owns Misfits? <laughs> Joe does. Does this give you motivation? No, no. It's just... It's, I just... <laughs> I just think you're full of shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> I just think you're full of shit. Correct assessment. <laughs> KSI is 100% right here. Now, if he would just go all the way with it and realize that not only is Joe full of shit, even though, again, I, I do like his trash talk, so is his built-up record. It's full of shit. They call you the nightmare, but you're just going to be a wet dream. That's what you're going to be, bro. So he called KSI the wet dream. Does that mean that KSI's having a wet dream because Joe's put him to sleep with the romantic tension he was talking about earlier? Or Joe's having a wet dream because he put KSI to sleep? I don't know, but it sounds very sexual in here. That's all I'm saying. And that smile that Joe's got on his face, it's a little creepy, dude. I don't know who the wet dream's supposed to be, but I want out. You know, I was downstairs and I was like, it's not the same KSI. He's not He's not himself. Everyone's like, he's not. Facts. This is, this is something I wanted to address too. KSI very much reserved in this kind of interaction with Joe here and in the press conference. At the time this happened, I know he had a lot on his plate. He was going through stuff. He was apologizing for things. He just seemed tired. Potentially, something that you worry about if you're a KSI fan is, is he overtrained? Because you hear this guy doing six, seven days a week. That's the one thing you don't want. Right? I think when I knock you out and, you know, leave yeah. you un unconscious, yeah. then people will put me pound for pound the best in the influencer scene. 
then you'd be a pro boxer and you'd be like probably going to fight Dimitri Bivol next if you knock me out mate <laughs> shut the f up you are not anywhere close to Dimitri Bivol and also I don't necessarily agree that KSI is even right when he says, if I beat Joe Fournier, I am now pound for pound the best influencer boxer. I, I still have to disagree with that because of, again, the level of opponents. Joe is not the level of Tommy Fury. KSI, yes, would be undefeated. But again, outside of Joe, who is a step up, the competition level hasn't been anywhere near the people Jake has fought. And that's just, that's just what it is. You're not there yet. I'm not saying you'd never get there. Right? If you continued fighting... You just took a couple of fights in the Dominican Republic against trash cans with no record. And then you fought for a world title that you weren't sanctioned to fight for while also serving a PED suspension. And you started boxing when you were 30 years old and got to be friends with David. Hey, you'll get to the level of Joe Fournier. You're not there yet, KSI, but all you got to do is fight a bunch of no names and potentially have some question marks around the validity of fights. But let me tell you, the way you walked into his two left hands, do that to me. And you're not gonna yeah, be but I can, I can take a lot of damage. This is a good point from Joe, to be fair to him. He says, the way you walked into Temper's left hand, there were times in that Temper fight where KSI, he had some issues dealing with closing the distance, right? He, I think it was probably because he was still new to that blitz kind of style, right, that he does. And Temper a couple of times did on the back foot, pop a left hand down the pipe and catch KSI coming in. Now, granted, didn't hurt KSI in the slightest but i do have to think that joe has a little bit better just fundamental boxing ability than face temper does that's what i'm saying is i'm just down ding ding we walk in middle of the ring hands by our sides and we just start winging at each mm -hmm. other if you're so you're faster you're younger you're apparently punched like deontay wilder mm -hmm. right so what are you worried about <laughs> let's do it i think joe joe giving away a little strategy here maybe not the fact that he's going to actually do that where he puts his hands down and walks into range whatever but i think joe is really really concerned about his gas tank that's what I think. I know he's been eight rounds with David Hay, but he's also was somewhat active then. I think he wants to get KSI out of there early and goad him into a back and forth. That way, Joe has a better chance of landing a big one and getting KSI out of there early. That's genuinely what I think he wants out of this. The guy fought, what was the guy's name? Raycon, yeah, Raycon without the freaking headphones. He was in round number two of that fight. He wasn't being attacked at all. Raycon was literally just walking in a circle around the ring, getting dog walked by Joe Fournier. He sits down on that stool, and I'm just going to show you guys what he looked like. Look at this dude. Dead tired after two rounds of nothing. Oh, nice. Pete Davidson walks up. But this is literally all the fight was. This is the pace in which they fought for two rounds, and Joe was dead tired. Do you think for a second that KSI is going to just stand around the outside like this for two rounds? Sure, he may do that in some exchanges, but he is going to blitz and push and push and push. And again, I'm not saying it's necessarily always the greatest strategy for KSI, but that's how he fights. Joe, is this the toughest test of your career? Absolutely fucking not. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Stop asking stupid questions. I'll leave in a second if you ask me another silly question like that. To be fair, the Wilmer Mejia fight was apparently Joe's toughest test because you can't count the David Hay fight. It was a fucking exhibition. They weren't fighting. There's not a lot of guys on Joe's record. Let's just... Take a look again here. Probably Bella. This guy Bella is probably Joe's toughest test. But outside of that, there's not a ton of guys on here that KSI would have problems with. Maybe you should spar a bit more. Yeah? Yeah. For your sake. All right. For sure. Thanks for the advice. No, now, what you no should right. do, what? keep doing everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stop wearing prime uh, blow up drinks and getting suplexed by your mate. Yeah. Let me get back in the gym. Yeah, frog splash. Yeah, frog splash. Hey, KSI knows wrestling moves. KSI knows what a frog splash is. W, okay. It's all right. You got a rematch clause. You can run it back and, and, and when you stop wrestling. Is that a one-sided rematch clause? Kind of like what Jake, you know, Jake did with um, Tyron Woodley, I think. And then he did the same with Anderson. I don't know if there's a, a one side. Maybe he did the same with Tommy. I don't know if, there, if this is one-sided. Like, obviously, why would Joe get a rematch? But the fact that KSI's got one in there doesn't mean a lot to me. I know people make a big deal out of it. Like, oh, he's he's scared because he's got a rematch clause. It's pretty standard for the A side to do that. I'm, 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 I put my hand I'm, I'm a respectful man because whatever we do now ain't going to change I'm you being unconscious. You. See? That's a see, class, elegant. It's 007, oh, James Bond, God. yeah? <laughs> 007? Bro, you're triple zero. You are nowhere near. James Bond. That's crazy. Style, elegance, James Bond. He talked about KSI living in a fantasy land and then goes hit James Bond. I'll give Joe his credit. He's funny. And he's witty too. He's got he's he's nice off the top of the dome. He's pretty good. You're meant to be growing a billion dollar business. Mm -hmm. Nah, you know, you're meant to follow him, emulate not, my footsteps. I just don't want to touch you, especially after what you did. Oh, Press conference. oh you're afraid now, it's okay. I'm not afraid. Okay. Don't worry, I get it. May 13th. <laughs> Live on the zone pay-per-view at the Ovo Arena in Wembley. <laughs>
we find out. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. Good luck. You're going to need it. I'm not going to need luck. Jesus. There it is, folks. What did we learn from this face-to-face? -face? Honestly, nothing. Other than the fact that KSI knows that Joe is full of shit. And Joe also knows that Joe is full of shit. We also know that Joe wants to, uh, in some way, make KSI have a wet dream. But in the reality of this entire thing, we know what this fight is. It's KSI's next test. It is a stepping stone to potentially the KSI and Jake Paul fight. At the end of the day, Joe is a basic high level or maybe normal level amateur. And he still has basic boxing ability. KSI, the way he blitzes guys and the way he runs into things sometimes... It's dangerous if you're just willing to play that game because Joe's probably got two or three good rounds in it. Yes, I can outlast that. It's going to become a tidal wave. But what else happens? on Misfits number seven. Do Joe and KSI put on an instant classic? Does Joe Fournier take over Misfits boxing and make it into one of his shitty nightclubs? Or does KSI do what he said he's gonna do? Knock out Joe Fournier, beat a pro boxer, and then make his way to Jake Paul. Don't have those answers, but that's face off number one. Fight week is around the corner, so we got a ton of content coming. And then, pause. I guess we'll find out.